map, you will see there's a lack of red points. I just uh, uh, disappeared the developer world. I mean, uh, uh, United States, Canada, Western Europe, uh, Japan, Australia. Australia too, okay. Yeah. Nice, okay. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is more or less the world as, as the, well, again, as uh, most of the people see it. So, so, well, why do we have such a low uh, density here? Maybe because uh, most people don't have even access to technology. We have uh, over half of the countries in the world don't have a single Debian developer. Uh, in many points in the world, you can walk 1,000 kilometers in any direction. You will have find no Debian developers at all, especially now that we're all in the single point. Uh, Africa as a whole continent has 13 de developers I could find. Seven of them live in the only developed co uh, country. Um, I'm curious to know what, what countries are represented other than South Africa. In okay. Because I didn't know of anyone in North Africa. Or yeah. Africa. I think there's at least one in Senegal, I'm sure of. Senegal? Yeah, he's mentioned, but. Oh, uh, sorry, repeat. There's repeat one the question was how many developers in each country, in which country are the mm. other developers, the, the other six of, the, of Africa? I, I think there is at least one in, oh, sorry, we have the map, yeah. There is one, one in Nigeria, apparently. Okay. And uh -huh. there is one, one in there Egypt. There is one in Egypt, and Somalia? there seems to be one in uh, Somalia, yeah. I one don't or know two. if the. Four, one in yeah. I don't know if the points are real because there's one person also in Middle Greenland and one in Antarctica. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, there seems to be one in Madagascar. And well, there are, I think, uh, three or some uh, Spanish developers living in Canarias, which is, well, technically it's Spain, so I forgot to block it. But it's in Africa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, another blocking point is that uh, most uh, third world countries, uh, well, people care about speaking the official language of the country at most, yeah, because many people speak minority languages. Uh, uh, English is quite required to contribute to free software, and uh, well, it's a very important barrier for many, uh, many potential developers. Yeah, I, I may have an example for that. I, I was mentioning this talk I gave up in Chile. And unfortunately for mm -hmm. me, I don't speak Spanish at all. And uh, when you go to Chile, and I guess to all over Latin America, when you only speak English, I'm afraid it's not very well received. Uh, you are, th there's a, a kind of uh, Yankee problem, you know? Mm -hmm. So s s only speaking English is very handicapping things and we had to translate very quickly my slides about Debian. So I, I think I have quite good slides in Spanish now about uh, the Debian project, by the way, uh, with bad Spanish. They, they work, although they say uh, uh, happenings I instead of uh, successes or things like that. Yeah, but and the most important, I have met a few geek people over there and they didn't speak English at all. So it's completely fake to assume that each and every people in, involved in the Linux world speak English. That's completely false. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, y you all know probably that translating everything is uh, a kind of uh, thing I, um, I'm always talking about, of course. Uh, hmm. When we are back to the topic of Latin America, this is very, very important because the feeling about the language either Spanish or Portuguese in Brazil is very important. Uh, I think that most of you who were in uh, Porto Alegre or already felt this, and I think this is even stronger in Spanish-speaking mm -hmm. countries. I, I should say Castilian-speaking countries, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to say something? No. Okay. So the question was. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. You obey the rules. <laughs> I'm a good speaker. I repeat the question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And 
well, this is not Debian specific. The low population in most of the non-developed world uh, is uh, common to most free software, I think to any free software uh, big project. Yeah. Now, uh, yes, he has a, a strong uh, outsider motivation to, to talk about uh, uh, Latin America because he was just involved in, the, in this initiative. I, my main motivation to do it uh, was because, well, when I was accepted in, in Debian, this map, which is quite sparse, was even sparser. And uh, well, one of the tasks I've uh, said to myself is promoting free software all, all over the continent. Uh, uh, I, last year I was also also to Chile. I was in Bolivia to Peru, and I'm going to Colombia uh, on August. So, well, I've been trying to get more people in uh, uh, joining free software uh, projects uh, uh, because, well, it's a part of the world I live in. I think, well, uh, as uh, the saying goes, uh, you should uh, think globally, act locally. So that's, that's why I chose to give this. Now, there are some very strange, uh, very specific things about this continent. Uh, distances are not what you are used to if you are Euro uh, Europeans. I mean, for example, when I went to Chile, uh, 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 Martin Michelmeyer was, was also invited. And well, he was trying to arrange, he asked me to check with the organizers that, well, m maybe now that he's in Chile, uh, he can just take a bus and go over Machu Picchu because it's a very interesting thing in Peru. Yep, that would be from here, from Valparaíso to here. It doesn't seem too far. It's two days of travel. <laughs> yes? Uh, so distances are not anything, and, and people cannot afford to travel by plane. Uh, Bolivian place, for example. I, I took a plane from uh, Sucre to La Paz, the two capitals of Bolivia, it was $60. And it was quite cheap for me. But uh, people there uh, prefer spending <laughs> over one night uh, on a bus on a dirt road, because there's only a dirt road. And uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I saw some interesting things in this last year. In Bolivia, uh, I mean, network, uh, network uh, access lags be, uh, much be, uh, behind what we see here. To, uh, the, the download rate I have here from anywhere in the world is more that, than what I have in my university, locally. Uh, I mean, from the same university. Uh, in Bolivia, very few people can afford a computer. But anywhere you, anywhere you go, in every medium-sized city, you have plenty of internet cafes, and they're usually full. And, uh, well, People really use that resource a lot. I know that, well, when the, you, you don't own a computer, you cannot choose what to install in it, and that's a severe handicap, and you don't have a space of your own. So that's an important task the Bolivian people must, uh, must uh, see, I, I don't know, to, to make some community area to have their, their development hosted. Yep. Mexico, well, we have DSL coverage in over 80% of the country, but then again, we have uh, about 5 to 10% of people who can have a computer, so it's not really worth much. Yep, in Brazil, there are also community points everywhere. I think, uh, well, you know more or less these examples, but this is the most important problem we have in Latin America. Yeah, there's a story about uh, this princess, Princess Malintzin. Uh, she was a princess of one of the pre-Hispanic uh, 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 people, the countries they had. And uh, well, when, when the conquerors uh, went, uh, uh, got to Mexico, she was offered as a bride to the conqueror. And she learned Spanish, and she served as the uh, translator well, then Hernán Cortés, a couple of years later, when he was already uh, uh, governing all of uh, the new Spain, that's uh, Mexico, uh, more or less, uh, well, he got tired, left her, uh, sh uh, gave her in marriage to someone else, and uh, went away. Yeah. And it still happens all the time. We call that uh, malinchismo. Yep, that's the reason, for example, why Christian was invited. We have Debian developers in Chile. Yeah. In, in we have one. 
Well, <laughs> one, one and a half, really. One and a half, because another one is in new maintainer queue. So that's very few uh, in terms of number. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite high in terms of uh, comparing to other countries, other surrounding mm -hmm. countries. Chile is really the, the most advanced uh, country in the continent. Yes, and uh, Gunnar mentioned the development of connectivity, uh, so the supposedly poor development of connectivity. But things may change in the future because what's the main difference over there is there, there seems to be, I say there seems because this is a feeling for me, to be a strong involvement of the local authorities to develop a local uh, in the software industry, I guess, and uh, improve connectivity. I, I attended a few presentations over there about covering maybe half of Santiago with free wireless connectivity over there in the, with the small boxes around the, the streets. This is funded by the, uh, the local government to give uh, very, very easy internet access. So as long as you have easy internet access, you have the first brick on which free software development can be built on. But there is, this is probably a, a difference with our, our countries, I say our countries, over Europe, uh, over United States, Australia, and so on. There is a strong political involvement, of a strong need to, to develop all these new technologies as a way to develop the country. Uh, I hope uh, you all get the point. And this is w something I felt very hard, and I always mentioning this word political commitment, because this is, for many, many countries, this is a political choice, for instance, choosing free software. It's mm -hmm. first a political action before being another type of action. So we. Well, I know that among the Debian community, there are both people who think in political things, other people who think mostly in technical things. So we are not only a technical community. We, we make political choices in Debian. Am I right, beloved DPL? Do you agree on this? Mm -hmm. uh, but when people talk about free software over there, and especially the conference I was at, it was mostly about political involvement. I, I, I'm, I used to, to be kidding about this, but the way the presentation were held, it sounded like, um, I don't want to be a caricature, but it, sound, it, it was a very left-wing size uh, university. And I, I felt in the old days of the 70s in Chile, you know, and uh, it was really, different for me, but this is what makes free software advance in Latin American countries, mm -hmm. political commitment. Advance and stagnate also. <laughs> and uh, stagnate probably, yeah, yes. Yeah, there's another example, for example, uh, the, the about Venezuela. Yeah, when, when Hugo Chavez declared that uh, his uh, government will only use free software uh, mm -hmm. solutions, uh, well, many people in the uh, free software community were against it. Why? Because Hugo Chavez was, uh, had a weak support in those times. So uh, it was almost a fact that he would be overthrown. In fact, a uh, couple of uh, weeks after that, he, he was overthrown for two days. Yeah? So uh, if, wa if one party says, well, I'm committed to free software, then the other party uh, gets to power, well, uh, they will be committed to proprietary software just to state they're not the same. Yeah, it's, uh, or for example, what happens in Mexico? Well, we had a very uh, strong impulse uh, five years ago when, uh, what's uh, this idiot's name? My, my president, Vicente Fox, uh, when he started his mandate. Uh, uh, he was pushing for uh, something he called e Mexico. El, uh, I mean, in the e-business uh, uh, scheme. Yes, and well, it's a, a project that flopped because, because of the people he hired to do that. It, it was a very bad choice. But uh, uh, let me guess, they're all MCSEs, right? Uh, no, there the, the were people who tried. You know, it's very strange. Mexico has a, 
And I think that it, that is, uh, this is common to most uh, 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 South America as well. Um, the bureaucracy is a, is a form of life by itself. So uh, you make all kinds of government plans just to ensure the bureaucracy keeps living. So I worked in, in, in Mexico for, I mean, I, as a consultant for them, because they wanted to set up a, a LMS, a learning, a learning management system. And I happened to work uh, at that time in the pedagogic university. And I happened to be a visible person in free software. So, well, uh, I got contacted by them. And they said, well, let's uh, start uh, studying the, avail the uh, viability and the possibility of having this kind of studies. Blah, 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 blah. And when we showed them, we had two working complete uh, free software uh, learning management system solutions. They freaked out because what they wanted was not to have the, pro the product. They wanted to show there was enough work to justify their payment for the next three years. And there was not. Yeah. So, so it was all spent in more studying the same. And well, now we are about to finish the six year term for, for Fox. And no project will get started until the new president is elected. So we have this uh, three years of activity and three years of passivity periods. And it's the same in all the other countries because everything is so political and uh, you don't want to start a project that will end up benefiting someone else, even if it's from your same party. The benefit should go to you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, are there people from Brazil around here? Please raise your hand, people. Yeah. Uh, it would be interesting to have your opinion about this uh, strength or weakness about these mm -hmm. political things in your countries, or maybe in Argentina also. What is your feeling uh, about all this? You want to share with us? Hello. Uh, I think the, the political side of things in Brazil uh, with the PC Conectado is going to change somewhat the map of access to computers, to, to technology. Uh, PC Conectado is a low, uh, a low cost government project. Uh, which basically will give as many people as possible access to to a, a Linux operating system. This is a government. Uh, this is government led, funded. Government to, funded to give scheme. access to to to, to computers to with computers. Linux operating with systems. Linux. Uh, maybe not Debian. But the, the actual distribution's not been decided as yet. Uh, there is some talk about it being Kuramin, which uh, is another. Uh, are there such uh, similar projects uh, in uh, in Argentina? If uh, well, maybe Margarita would would like to share with us, please. <laughs> Just throw the microphone. Just over. throw the microphone over. <laughs> I try to take advantage of the few Latin American people yeah. around here. Well, contrary to Brazil, in Argentina uh, this year a project was started to give people access to a cheap computer. And the chip computer was not really cheap, and it included Windows. Yeah. So from the free software community, there was uh, quite a movement to, to stop this, because uh, it's like ripping people off. <laughs> yeah. the, the idea was first uh, giving access to computers, then we'll see later. I think I talked with uh, Jalda uh, yesterday about this. Th they had such initiative in India to very low-cost computers, and it finally turns out it seems to be of a fake good idea, <laughs> because in uh, low-developed countries, uh, I, I don't think I can classify Argentina or Brazil as low-developed country, but. Uh, even if the computer is half the price, the people who need it can't really afford it anyway. And the people who can afford the half, uh, half price computer can also afford the, the full price computer. So this is probably, for sure, a fake good idea to give access to low cost computers. Well, actually, the thing is that uh, these are Intel computers, so they are more expensive because they are Intel and no AMD. Yeah. And they are charging the Windows license half the price. 
but it's st they still are charging the window license. So there are some businesses like, uh, well, uh, uh, no, uh, businesses, normal businesses, no, nor related to the government, who chose to sell AMD with l Linux, and the machines are cheaper than the ones that are government founded. So and, uh, our government is like going completely on the you see, wrong you, way. On the wrong way, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's more or less like what I've seen. Uh, in Mexico, one of those companies that uh, started uh, uh, promoting uh, cheap computers is ESMAS, which is the, the technological arm of Televisa, which is, well, the largest uh, TV uh, network, uh, network in, uh, in Latin America. So, well, they started, uh, they say, well, yeah, we, we want to hand out cheap computers. What is cheap? Well, bad. Yes. Uh, I, I evaluated one of those computers because, well, it was very interesting to me uh, that they were actually shipping uh, 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 no, uh, Woody installations with a, a KDE backport, KDE 2 something. Uh, the thing is, the computers they were selling, I don't know if any of you saw ever the Intel dot stations. They are computers that look exactly like uh, the first iMac, uh, that have a 300 megahertz pr processor, 64 megabits of RAM. And uh, well, th this was one year ago. I mean, 64 megabytes for KDE and uh, OpenOffice and uh, Mozilla, well, it, it just does not work. And people, the few people that bought one of those, uh, you have the option of buying it with Linux or with Windows. Of course, the people that uh, bought it with Linux uh, got the Windows option because it really, really sucked. And the Windows op option had more memory. Uh, yeah, no, really. Yeah, I, I think all these initiatives, I'm not sure that all these initiatives are very, very good targeted. And the, mm -hmm. the main hope for free software progress in many countries, including Latin America, is probably through the education system, for instance. Uh, this conference I was at, there were many people involved in the education system, and there are a lot of initiatives for such, uh, such things, which basically look like Scholar Linux, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I think that the Scholar Linux people probably have to get closer to Latin America uh, because there is strong development area, probably, I, probably also in Brazil too. And well, I, I just want to, f just don't want to forget to mention this. There is probably also a strong connection to develop between the communities and probably the Brazilian community and the, the Spanish-speaking uh, countries community and connect together all the very small initiatives you may have in all the countries. You have Debian Chile, you have Debian Peru, you have a lot of organizations in Brazil, but now it's probably time to connect together, which may not be easy, but. Uh, this is the thing to do. The, the organizations are emerging currently, and the danger for me is to have all these things evolve separately. You know, there's certain truth and certain falsity to what you say, because most South American countries are closely related between each other, and yes. of course, closely related to the giant that's Brazil. Yes. Uh, I mean, Brazil has a border with every South American country except for two. Uh, but uh, on the other side, Mexico, it was very weird for me to go to South America because in Mexico we have a, a really only one border with the United States. We don't care about what goes on in Latin America. We are not in, uh, integrated in Latin America. Uh, we only, the, the only link we have with uh, Central America is the Mara Salvatrucha, that's a very, very violent kind of a, a gangsters uh, that, that are from Salvador. <laughs> but uh, I mean, Central, and, uh, Central America, the Caribbean, and Mexico do not have uh, bonds to the South American continent, which does have strong bonds within itself. 
I think we had a question or yeah. something no, no, to it's say. Not, it's not a question, it's more an observation that um, free software is not so much the fight now, especially in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, the fight now is free culture which is the thing that is more important. Yes, this is uh, what I felt also about free culture, yeah. free access to knowledge. Uh. There is a, there's also another government project in Brazil, uh, which is to install in poor communities throughout the whole of Brazil. Uh, they're called Pontes de Cultura, which is a cultural center, which will have dancing, have music, um, but will also have multimedia workstations, uh, all running Linux, which will be Debian. Uh, to enable people to capture their own culture, a remix culture. Mm -hmm. uh, everything will be released in a, a Creative Commons type license. Mm -hmm. um, so so th th the whole point is that the culture needs to be free, not just the software, I yeah. think is the most yeah, important. Yeah, this is an access entry. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we uh, had, I think we had a question Michael over also there. Also had one. Yeah. Mika also? <laughs> Mi Mika, Mika, how you say your name? Michael. Mike, okay. yeah. uh, Safir, <laughs> Safir had one, one question, please. Uh, actually, uh, it's not a question, it's just a, a reflection on the situation in, uh, on, in the Balkans. Uh, like, I have an example. Uh, Safir is from Bosnia, for yes, people I'm who, from Bosnia who don't know it. Yeah. Uh, that's a country which borders uh, with uh, Serbia uh, and Montenegro on its left, and uh, I mean, on on east and uh, Croatia on the west. Uh, actually, uh, uh, from the Balkans' uh, standpoint, the situation is as it is. Uh, Microsoft su succeeded in uh, making contracts with the Croatian government for use of their products uh, within the Croatian government institutions, as well as uh, in Serbia and Montenegro. But uh, due to our effort. They haven't uh, really succeeded yet in Bosnia because uh, they were pushing for signing the contract with the Bosnian uh, government officials about using Microsoft products in Bosnian uh, government in institutions. But uh, uh, on behalf of our uh, Linux users group and the associations of uh, computer users and developers of Bosnia and Herzegovina, we have made uh, a strong case uh, 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 against using the proprietary software and using the uh, free open source software. So uh, our government is, uh, has put uh, the plan for informatization of uh, their uh, facilities until the end of this year, which leaves us uh, a little more, more time uh, for our case. It's just uh, now, uh, it's a concern for us because uh, our government has been known for uh, corruption and uh, bribery is uh, a possible case for some polit uh, decision-making politicians. So uh, we just hope and uh, see that uh, we succeed in our plan. I mean, we are the only uh, unconquered country yeah. when it comes to Microsoft uh, on Balkans. Yeah, I think that most, most countries uh I would say emerging countries are a very good target for proprietary software vendors. They, they don't care now about Europe and United States. Their real target is in the so-called third world. And uh, this is something all the local people have to be very careful about. And probably uh, you, you all can have some action and organize yourself before it's too late, uh, probably. Uh, yeah, one thing, uh, it's not Latin America, but I had some, I was in Africa last year and spoke with some developers from Nigeria and they expressed a con, I asked them why there's not so many free software developers in Africa and their opinion was that for them, they're spending, well for us in developed worlds, we are able to work on free software as a hobby in our spare time. And for them, the problem was, in their spare time, if they're going to work on something, they need to be working on something that's developing a skill they can use to make money. Mm -hmm. And so, unless they're using or developing free software so that they see an obvious economic uh, benefit that can be made so they can make money for their family, then they are not wasting time with that. 
because if there's not free software jobs in their country, then they're just spending idle time, and it's dangerous for them. And That's what they tell me. You, it's a luxury. You have a very, very yeah. important point there. I mean, for example, looking back at uh, what I was telling about Bolivia, uh, well, I know there are some uh, like uh, uh, internet cafe-like solutions, and uh, many countries are just like it. Uh, there's a very special thing about uh, Bolivia that I didn't mention, and it's uh, I think it's uh, valid in most uh, in most countries uh, there. Uh, one of the main income uh, of the main incomes of the country is that they export people. Yes, uh, uh, in Bolivia, all the internet cafes are so crowded because you have the family living uh, in, U in Europe. Uh, in Mexico, for example, officially the first uh, source of income for for the, the country is the uh, uh, petroleum sales, and the second is people working in the United States that send the money over. It's uh, amazing, and uh, uh, yes, uh, we have to find a way to develop what's going to be used uh, directly. I, I have been trying to talk with people from the different levels of the government in Mexico. There are some people uh, making some advance, yes, trying to get the government to hire people to develop solutions. Uh, but, uh, well, uh, many of uh, the continent's uh, uh, governments are right now quite uh, uh, economically right-winged, yeah, uh, so they want the government to sell all, all, all of its uh, uh, businesses and to just buy products, not buy people to make products. So and it does not fit our model because we all know that we are mm -hmm. communist people, you know? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I, I'd like to, I think we will have to conclude at some moment, so yes, very I, as I told too much, I will try to ma make first conclusion myself. Uh, if I can give a, a goal for you, you all people, both the people in Latin America, it would be to say to you, uh, Organize yourself a lot. Be a, a, be a big, important lobby. You, I know you are already, but develop all these connections. Probably try to set up conferences if possible and uh, sort out the the funding problems. Because uh, even was, while being in Chile, I was surprised that there were very few people from other countries, only because there was no funding to bring them. So this is already important, and I feel, for instance, very important <coughs> that next year, if we have DEPCONF in Mexico, and I really hope we will have DEPCONF in Mexico, we will make a big effort to bring as many Latin American developers over there. Uh, a, a kind of, uh, uh, yes, at the expense of bringing other developers maybe, but this may be a choice our bill of DPL we have to make to authorize such funding. Thank you, Bran. Uh, and uh, another thing I want to say is uh, if you all Debian developers have opportunity to go and speak about our project, about Debian, about free software, but don't forget about Debian also, uh, please take it, please use this opportunity to, to speak about, free, uh, about Debian, about what makes spe Debian specific. Because there, there is not a, such a strong perception of the differences between maybe Debian, Red Hat, and so on and so on. We have a difference. I think you all agree we have a kind of difference. And speak about it. If you have opportunities, use it. If you talk the language, please be an ambassador. Please talk with the people. People like when you, you talk their language. If you have to go to Latin America, if you speak Spanish, this is a big, big improvement. Okay? If you, and this is not only true for Latin America, I think. So, uh, Guna want to en enhance that uh, bringing things from the outside is not the only solution. I think this was your point. <coughs> uh, this is on the only way we have. Uh, I am outside Latin America. I can just make some lobbying to make things progress. But at some moment, the local people have to work on it also. Uh, I want to add on this. Uh, yes, one of my main points in Latin America is uh, to get the people developing for themselves. But then again, I am pushing for DevConf to be in Mexico. Then two years after that, well, if we keep the tradition of 
one year in this side of the Atlantic, one, one year the other side, it will probably be Argentina. Uh, and I mean, we're, we're not willing to have a uh, DevConf in the United States, that's for sure. Uh, so we have to be in Latin America. Yeah. And, but uh, what I want... You're great, Canada. you're great. Uh, Just in Canada, they had one, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, but w one of my points in bringing DevConf over there is to get the people to to see what uh, what's it like to a, a, a large development effort. So they see they can collaborate. So local people see they have a place in a global effort, and they well to to get more people involved. I think it worked well last mm -hmm. year in uh, in Brazil. In Brazil. I, I was very happy to see a lot of local people mm -hmm. coming and just hack around in the hack lab. I have a few pictures of this, and this was. This is how DebConf should work. So if we have DebConf in Mexico, yes, I hope to see a lot of Mexican people with these big hats sleeping in the all around. Yeah, okay, you know. I hope to get that image <laughs> out of you. I, <laughs> <laughs> we don't like sleeping on cactuses. <laughs> we have another question, please. Maybe I should oh, just sorry, make a... We're out of time. To, uh, oh, we're out of time, so no, this I is the last question, maybe. Okay, yeah, maybe I should just give a quick update about what happened after, after DevConf in, in Brazil. Uh, the DevConf in Brazil was in the south of the country, which is the most advanced part of the country. It was very westernized. But there was quite a few people that came down from Amazonas, from the northeast. Uh, about two months after, uh, we had uh, Gia Debian, which is a Debian day for Debian's birthday. Uh, in Amazonas, we had the biggest, uh, the biggest event in, uh, throughout the whole of Brazil. This is di directly as a result of, of the conference. Uh, we had uh, 500 people come to a, a Debian Day in Manaus. Uh, we were expecting 40. Yeah, in Manaus. It's people. completely far from anything, Manaus. Manaus yeah. is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had to swim over up to, uh, to Manaus. <laughs> With the piranhas, you're right. <laughs> Just like the Finn people jump out of the sauna and jump in the lake, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, uh, well, it, it was time to conclude. So it turned out to be kind of a talk, so I'm really sorry we talked too much. And, uh, well, I think that Gunnar and I were very happy to see a lot of people attending this. Uh, this is not a talk, mm -hmm. but uh, thank you so much, people. Very much.